the Trail of Tears, how do you feel about the way Native Americans were treated in Badly. Colorado? Badly. I do, I don't think they were done. Had a good time. On our farm, when we lived on the farm after, before we moved to Wiggins, we could see circles in our pasture where the Indians had set up camp mm -hmm. as they went through. There was no home for them. They were just nomads. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were treated very nicely. We just kind of pushed them aside. I know in South Dakota, they pushed them all to the reservations. Mm -hmm. If you've ever visited that reservation, it's sad. Mm -hmm. Sure, they drink, but it's sad. They have nothing rocks. I don't think they were treated fairly. That's my own opinion. And I could claim some ancestry in India, but I've never pursued it. More German. <laughs> with how mentally disabled people were treated in the past? They didn't know how to handle them. Mm -hmm. There was no facilities for them. You tried to take care of them at home as best you could. But today, I mean, it's greater today. Mm -hmm. Much nicer. If you had an Alzheimer grandma or grandpa, you just had to watch out for them. Yeah. All of us had to take a turn and make sure where grandma or grandpa was. That's, but today, yeah. <coughs> People working and everything, they have, you know, they can't take care of them. Mm -hmm. It's not safe anyway. Right. You don't know where they're going to go. So I don't know. I've got a cerebral palsy uh, niece. She has everything in the world today. She's in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So she's well taken care of. But in those days, there was not much for them. Do we have time for two more questions? <laughs> What do you guys think are a good bargain these days, if anything? <laughs> Watch the sales. Yeah. <laughs> What's your bargains? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Be a little bit frugal. Yeah. Hard. <laughs> On those lines, do you like Walmart? I like Kmart better. <laughs> <laughs> because his daughter works there. <laughs> I don't know. I got started in Walmart when I moved to Greeley, and I just stayed there. They're okay. <laughs> they were uh, outfits that. Well, they just don't treat their health <laughs> right. <laughs> they, uh, they're all for their money and for their gold. But but you're going to see a lot of changes with K Mart since they've been to Sears. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. going to see a lot of changes. Yeah. Thank you all. We've reached the end of the hour. Thank you, Floyd, Benny, Myra. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Knowledge by reading. But you must separate the chaff from the wheat by thinking. Mm. I'm Catherine Berthlein, and I thought it was interesting when I think about um, World War II, you always hear that people are very scared and living in a life of fear. Like That's how it was always portrayed to me. But in talking to everyone, they said that they really weren't, they just got by and they did what they had to do and they, they knew what was happening, but at the same time, it was life and it's just something that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was interesting how talking to people in real life, dealing with these things on a daily basis, and just the difference between that and watching it in a movie or hearing it on the news or reading it in a textbook even. It's very different the way that it's portrayed. But it just reinforces my ideas of how anything like that is portrayed. They always make it more dramatic 
and not that it wasn't dramatic and not that it wasn't a huge deal, obviously it was, but at the same time, like, human beings do what they have to do to get by mm -hmm. and make ends meet and make tomorrow happen. And so that was huge. <coughs> and then also hearing the difference between entertainment and how young adults were and how conservative and respectful and responsible they were compared to kids today. But I do believe that we have a lot of responsibility, but it's different. It's a lot different. Mm -hmm. So, that's interesting. Very good. <laughs> you are? I'm Robin Heiner, and I thought it was interesting um, also going on the World War II, um, how Betty was talking about how when the um, her brothers were drafted to the military, um, she had to go to the blacksmith and work with her father, and like you always hear about those things, you know, how the woman had to take the men's jobs and things like that. I thought that was really interesting, just and how she enjoyed it too, you know, and also how um, the entertainment er area was different, how they don't seem to, it didn't seem like they had time to do like entertainment things as much as like we just go to the movies, you know, and take it for granted that we have time to do those things. And back then they had things to do, you know, every day for a long time and just, it's interesting to see how things changed. <laughs> okay. I'm Morgan Fanning. Um, I've done a lot of research on the depression in my schooling and just on my own time. And I thought it was really interesting how they mentioned the sandstorms that t came across. And most people don't realize that the Dust Bowl came out this far west and how it impacted a lot of people's lives. And just the story of how they had to put up blankets and sweep out sand every day. It was a reality for a lot of people, and it was hard for people. And I think a lot of people just think of Oklahoma when they think mm -hmm. of that. So I thought that was fascinating. And I also thought it was interesting, the entertainment, when we asked how, if they recognized the names of some of our modern day celebrities, and they knew some, and we asked about their celebrities, but I just think it's fascinating how today I can sit on the couch and watch TV and know everything about Angelina Jolie's life, mm -hmm. and that wasn't how it was years ago, and I can't say it's better or worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I learned a lot. Very good. All right, and? I'm Kelly Danahay. I found it fascinating um, when Floyd was talking about his military experience and how he was a medic, and he just went off without any basic training and they automatically put him in that spot. And I remember talking to my grandfather one day, and he was telling me, he was actually a doctor in the Navy, and he was telling me how they required him to finish med school in a matter of two years in order to ship him off to the Navy so that he could become a doctor. And I thought that was just like a kind of like a, a case just on his basis, just because he was a doctor and going to school and all that stuff. But I found it fascinating that the need was so great that they sent these people out without any basic training, and basically they were supposed to survive on their own, learn while trying to fight and save lives and all that stuff. So I found that really interesting. Um, I also, um, a lot of this, my grandmother was a farm girl as well, and I remember talking to her. And, she would tell me these stories, and it's kind of, I learned a lot listening to Betty and Myra about how when they were learning, like living on the farm, and I found it interesting that they didn't know much about the Beatles, where, I mean, even a kid in the 21st century, I absolutely adore the Beatles, and um, my grandmother would never have known about the Beatles, and it's, it's interesting how, as a city kid, I don't realize what it would ever be like to work on the farm, and I have it so easy. I mean, I've never had to work with my hands before, I've never had to milk a cow, I've never had to, you know, go and plant stuff, and it's, it's so funny how there's the two different worlds that we live completely together and, <coughs> like, thrive off of each other because we can never live without the people that work on the farms, and they can never live without us producing mechanical things and stuff like that, so I found that very interesting. Very good.